Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at Legacy Update, which is a really cool project that allows you to bring Windows Update back to versions of Windows that either no longer support using it or encounter some sort of problem when initially trying to download an update on a clean install. And it essentially provides a one-stop shop for getting whatever Windows version you're running completely up to date. I mean, of course, as up to date as you can be on an old version of Windows. And as you can see, we're here on Windows XP on the Dell Latitude D610, and I can go to this website in internet Internet Explorer 6. There's no trickery going on here. You can head on over to legacyupdate.net on a fresh install of Windows XP RTM and you'll have no issues downloading it. That's the really nice thing about this. You don't have to download it on another computer and copy it over to your Windows XP machine. Now, I am running Windows XP Service Pack 2 just for full disclosure here, but the only reason I'm running that is because I had to install it so that some drivers I needed to get this thing on the network would be able to function. Now, if you've ever tried going to Windows Update on Windows XP, you'll know that you'll get to a page that looks like this. It'll try to load, and then you'll just be brought to an error page. Now, this is because back a couple years ago, Microsoft discontinued Windows Update's SHA-1 based endpoints, which Windows XP relied on to connect to Windows Update out of the box. Now, this doesn't mean that Microsoft isn't still hosting updates for Windows XP, because they are, at least for some updates, over on the Microsoft update catalog, but of course you can't access that through IE6 either. Microsoft did remove some updates from this for Windows XP back a couple years ago, so you're not going to get every update you need, and even if there was, it's going to take a long time to go through that update catalog and download every single thing that you need. So this is where Legacy Update comes in, and we'll go back to this window here. Because not only is it support on Windows XP, but also Windows 2000, Windows Vista, Windows Server 2003, and Server 2008. And if you've ever used Windows Update on XP, this site will probably look pretty familiar to you because it's designed to mimic the old Windows Update site, which I think is pretty cool. And yeah, so you can read about it here. You can go check out the developer on his various social media profiles, and you can also support him on GitHub. And you can even get your name printed on the site here, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and download it, and we'll just click on Install Legacy Update, and it'll download an EXE file. We'll just save that to the desktop, why not? And it is a 512 kilobyte file, so nothing super large. We're just going to run it here. Of course, it's it's not everything because it actually has to download stuff once you run the setup executable. So we'll run it here. And you see we've got a few options to go through here. We're just going to minimize the web browser. So first up, you can get Windows XP Service Pack 3 right from here. I'm going to uncheck this and I'll tell you why in a moment. We'll come back to this. You've got the Windows Update Agent Update, which is mandatory. You can't uncheck check it so we're going to definitely get that what's really cool is you can enable windows embedded pos ready 2009 updates you can also update the root certificate store which you probably want to do and you can get legacy update itself which i mean you definitely want to do if you intend to use this program to its full potential what this does is it will replace the windows update link here in the start menu with one that says legacy update and then you'll click on that you'll go to the legacy update site and you can download all the updates from there, just like you could on Windows Update before. Why did I uncheck Service Pack 3? Well, that's because of an interesting issue that I encountered when I was experimenting with this in a virtual machine. So I was running XP RTM, and I had checked to update to Service Pack 3. Now to do that, you have to get Service Pack 2 first and then update to SP3. You can't go straight from RTM to SP3. So it downloaded Service Pack 2, and ran through that setup just fine, but when it rebooted and tried to go through the Service Pack 3 update, it just crashed. The entire legacy update program crashed, and I could not relaunch it from the original executable. It would just immediately crash. For whatever reason, I was encountering that problem. So I'm going to uncheck Service Pack 3 from here. You can still get it from going into legacy update. And I'll show you that in a moment here, but we're gonna click on install and it will download everything that it needs. And there you go, we're done in like less than a minute there. 
and you get welcome to legacy update checking for the latest updates for your computer just like you did on the original windows update screen and there we go so here's that one update we're going to download and install now it'll come up with the classic installing update screen or it's actually three things so it gets windows installer 3.1 the genuine advantage validation tool and then there's one more thing yeah just an update for windows xp so we'll just let it do that now this process of downloading legacy update is essentially the same on every version of Windows that it supports. Now I've done this on Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. And we're going to demonstrate Windows Vista in a little bit here because there is a, a little bit of a difference that I want to touch on. And that just has to do with the fact that as you probably know, Windows Vista and above, when you go into Windows Update, it no longer takes you to a website. It's actually a part of the Windows control panel. So we're going to restart now and we're back. So if we go into the start menu now, you'll notice that Windows Update has been, as I mentioned, replaced with legacy updates. So if we click on that, it will open up Internet Explorer 6 and it will take us to that same page that we were on. And it actually uses a similar URL to the original page, slash Windows Update slash V6, just on legacyupdate.net, of course. So this time, it will give us a bunch of updates to install. Now, the other neat thing is it will identify whatever version of Windows that you're running right up here down to the service pack. So Windows XP Home Edition SP2. So it should give us the option to install SP3. So you can do that or get how many updates do we have here? Like an absolute ton. Look at all these updates. You've got some optional software updates here for like .NET Framework. You got Media Player 11. Uh, Windows Search 4.0 for Windows XP, Live Essentials, and then you've got even your hardware upgrades. So, you know, for various drivers that I have not installed, I do have local copies of all of these, but, you know, you could get them from Windows Update, which is really nice. You can even sort them by high priority. You got 70, software optional, hardware optional, Windows, Windows Live, you can sort it by product there. And yeah, so it's, it's really, really cool. And we're just going to download let's just do all of these since you know windows update or windows update windows xp service pack 3 will be a pretty simple install let's just go ahead and get all of these uh what was it 70 uh high priority updates so we'll just or i guess it's 69 since it doesn't include the xp service pack 3 one there so that's nice we'll uh hit review and install and we're off to the races so it's downloaded 19 so far it's still got a decent amount to go through and this is just the first batch by the way i guarantee you once this completes we'll go back in and there'll be a whole nother list of updates there and then of course service pack 3 so yeah we're just gonna let this do its thing and i'm gonna swap over to the windows vista machine and i'll show you the setup process on that and how there's a little bit of a difference compared to Windows XP here. All right, so here we are on my HP Compact 6510B, and this is running Windows Vista RTM, build 6000. So yeah, we don't even have the proper display driver installed. You see, we've got, we're running at like 640 by 480 right now. So we're gonna go to Internet Explorer and head on over to legacyupdate.net. So we're gonna go down here and just go through that same setup process. Now the options will be a little bit different this time because we're running under Vista. So we'll run it here, we'll authenticate with UAC. And so now you can see that we've got two mandatory options, Vista Service Pack 2 and Vista Post Service Pack 2 updates. You can also choose uh, your optional options are to update root certificate store, which you probably want to do as well. And you've got legacy update. Now, you can still download updates directly from Microsoft through Windows Update on Windows Vista. And that's something you may have been asking yourself, well, why is this even necessary for Windows Vista to even get this? Well, the reason why is because on a fresh install of Vista, at least RTM, like I've got here, we'll go ahead and turn on Windows Update. When you try to check for updates for the first time, you'll either get an error code or it will just indefinitely check for updates and never display anything. There's that error code right there. So it says it could not search for new updates. Now, this, I believe, is the result, I think, on the legacy update site here. It mentions uh, 
It identifies the updates your system lacks and installs them automatically, restoring the Windows Update service to full functionality. So you have to get an update or a series of updates for Windows Vista before you can even use Windows Update. But when you check this option, what it does is it will configure, as it says down there, Windows Update to use the legacy update proxy servers. It will also add that same option in uh, the start menu to go to legacy update, but Windows Update will still remain and you can also download updates just like you normally can on Vista. So we're just gonna check it here for this demo and we'll hit on install. All right, so here we are. We're finally done with the Service Pack 2 setup and we've loaded back into Windows here and it's brought up the legacy update page and it's currently checking for updates. You can see that we've got uh, a .NET Framework 4 client profile for Windows Vista. This has to be installed separately. Then we've got all these updates here. Look at all of these. And then you've got some optional ones here. The Vista Ultimate Extras, which you would definitely want to get. I mean, I'm running Vista Ultimate, so that's why they show up. You got all these language packs in here. You got some more updates down here, some optional stuff. But as I mentioned, you can still go through the regular Windows update interface in the control panel so I've got that here you can see it shows updates I can go and view all of them from here you got the ultimate extras right there so you can really do it either way and one more thing that I want to uh, touch on as well if we go to uh, the main site if we scroll down there are a couple of tools uh, check update server and view log file so you can view the log file here oh yeah the date what the date's been off this whole time I just noticed that, so that explains why uh, why uh, the date is off there in the log file. But yeah, the other thing is check update server. So this will tell you what server you're using to get updates. You can see it's currently using the WSUS server, uh, which is the legacyupdate.net slash v6 site that we just went to, you know, we had opened up in the other browser. So this is when you select legacy update in the installer, it will switch to the legacy update proxy server instead of downloading them directly from Microsoft. So you could disable that and then just download the updates from Microsoft if you wanted to. Uh, but you know, getting them through the legacy update proxy server works just fine. So yeah, I mean, there it is guys. That is legacy update in all of its glory. Definitely a really useful piece of software that I would definitely recommend checking out on an old Windows computer you might have lying around. I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you as always in the next video.